making this video about this. That about Penguin Zero. I love Penguin Zero though. Oh my gosh, he's funny. Um, he's relatable too. My gosh. But anyway, this is gonna be a God of War review. Like somehow, some way, shape, or form, this is gonna be a God of War Ragnarok review. I'm not finished with the game. I can't afford the game. Um, so I can't play it. But I can watch it. And I can review it and go back and rewatch it again and again and again, again. I have the first game. I haven't finished the first game either. That game is hard. I put it on Give Me a Challenge knowing damn well I'm terrible at playing games. Um, but I got better though. So yeah. But anyway, let's get it. I'm going to do the characters first. Like the characters I know so far. It's not that many. But I'm going to do them first because I know there's a lot more. And then we're going to talk about the story so far because I love it. Anyways, let's get it. We're starting off, of course, with Kratos, this Hulkling of a man played by Christopher Judge. Um, when it comes to Kratos, we actually start off the series with him reminiscing. I think he has a bag of um, his wife's ashes. I don't know why I said it like that. A bag of Faye's ashes and stuff like that. And he's kind of remembering all the events from the other game if you press the um, recap button and how he looks he looks like he's about to cry like it's it made me want to cry hold on like it made me sad because with Kratos and what happened to Faye he didn't really get time to like by himself and grieve like talking with he never I don't think he knows how to really grieve because in throughout all the games he does so with revenge like you know he just constantly is trying to get revenge from the gods he can't really mourn his dead wife and child because he killed them so of course he can't really like it's like he's mad at the gods but he's mad at himself and he wants to like off himself but the gods won't let him die so it's like I, I don't know it's just it's sad right but then this comes with the fact that like his wife is not dead it's like damn all the people he's come to love they die except Faye's death wasn't because of him it was because literally of a mysterious illness so yeah but we start off the series with him in a cave reminiscing and whatnot then we see Atreus and then time goes throughout it's like their dynamic is much better like Atreus no longer looks depressed and like he's mad all the time when he's around Kratos because I did a video where it showed Atreus' face and he was like mean mugging the camera like he was glaring baby but it was also more of a sad damn I'm stuck with my father I'd rather be with my mama type look and whatnot this is spoilers by the way another thing that happens is that they confront well Freya confronts them she roll up and give them them hands and stuff like that she gives them that sword she puts them dead in his face she drives his face through the mud I'm just like damn bitch and Kratos is all like you know I don't want to fight you and honestly it's nice to see him have like this much remorse because if it were any other god baby if he were young if he were younger he would have already killed her okay that's that's the thing about it. That's how much you can see Kratos change. He's not only holding back, you know, because Freya's strong, but he's encountered strong as gods before. He's not only holding back, he genuinely has like no like um feeling in him to actually fight her. He doesn't want to fight her at all. So it's like that is nice to see. When it comes to him and Atreus, he still has somewhat of a divide. His way of like going through things and grieving is different from Atreus's one. When Kratos grieves, he tra he trains. And when Atreus was grieving his dog, he uh, well, wolf. Oh my gosh, why I say dog? Um, dog. <laughs> he told him to train, or he was just like, "Now we train." And Atreus was just like, "What, father? What?" And I was thinking about him, just like, "What? What are you doing, Kratos? He, his dog just died, and you're saying we need to get stronger? Like, what are you talking about? Where you on?" And to find out that Kratos only did that because Atreus was grieving and he needed, like, I guess he wanted Atreus to get out his anger or his sadness, but I, that's not, Atreus is like that, you know, I guess. So Kratos was trying, but he didn't succeed. At first you don't succeed, like, at first you don't succeed. And then you get his eye, you meet Mimir and all that. I don't know why I'm explaining the events of the damn story, I'd be, I'm sorry, but his relationship with Mimir is better, like how he talks to Mimir. He talks to Mimir like a friend. He even goes on to say, like, it's okay, brother. You Like, he calls him brother. And I was just like, what? Kratos? You have a friend? It's a Mimir? Ah! I can't. Mimir is his friend and it's so nice to witness. 
he even tells Amir about like, oh yeah, you know, why are you surprised? Like they were collecting poems and he loves to collect stuff. And Cre Atreus even explains to Tyr, oh yeah, I have to talk about Tyr later on, that like Kratos loves to loot. He loves loot. He loves to go around and look for things. And so he found a series of poems and Mimir was just like, you're collecting a lot of poems. And then Kratos was just like, why so surprised? My people are known for this. And I was just like, this is the first time I heard him talk about his people in not a negative light. I don't think I've ever heard him talk about his people in this series. Like, genuinely talk about well actually no he told atreus about like a soldier that atreus is named after i think yeah i think so but when it's not in a negative ass like sad tragedy you know anger all that like i think he's talked about his people in that way but he talked about his people in like a neutral light here like my people are known for poems like why are you shocked and mamir is just like he's not shocked he said he's esteem. I don't I don't know what he meant, but I have to look it up. I know what esteem means. It's just that I don't know why he used it in this context. I, I, okay, let me let me just go. On. Also, in this one, he's a lot more. He's not laid back at all when it comes to Atreus, but he's also kind of like not so up his up like like on to Atreus like talking with Atreus. Literally leaves and go meets Freya, and Kratos is straight up just like, oh yeah, where you been? And then Atreus says he was peeing. And it's like, you actually believe him, Kratos? Like, you don't straight up just be like, uh, no the fuck you weren't. Where have you been? Like, why, why isn't he like that? So it's like, I don't know how to explain. He's not as strict in that way, in his shape of fashion. He's not as strict. He actually listens to his son more and shit like that. You know, he even goes with his son to go get tear and stuff like that. And Kratos don't like God. So it's like, for him to be okay with, like, Atreus going to meet a God they never met before and have never known it's like what like okay Kratos I see it I see you but yes he's being more open to his son's suggestions and that is really beautiful to see like he's genuinely trying even more and stuff like that he may not be as good with words he still grunts he doesn't say come here boy he doesn't say boy anymore I don't think I heard him say boy once in this game Ah, the character development is thriving. I love it. <laughs> but anyway, let's move on. Well, should we talk about how when he met Tyr? Okay, whenever I do this review, I did this review once, and I never talked about the Thor versus Kratos fight because it reminded me of him versus Balder, but this one has more weight to it because genuinely speaking, Kratos did kill one of Thor's kids, and... Uh, Atreus killed the other one, but he doesn't tell him that because I feel like Thor would low key fucking kill Atreus. He already hates giants. Thor is racist, so um, yeah. In that fight, ah, oh, there's a there's a point where the Thor kills him and brings him back to life. He just like uh uh, I ain't done with you yet, and then revives him by shocking him with lightning. Is it? Oh shit! I was just like, bro, ooh, we not gonna survive. We are not gonna make it. We not gonna make it. We not gonna make it. Man, and then Thor saw enough and then flew away. That fight was epic. They even caused the frozen lightning rift in the sky. Like, it shot up all the way into the sky. There's a little cloud around it. It's like a landmark. They made a landmark, goddammit. It was so cool. <laughs> so, yes, but Kratos, he died in that fight. And he was brought back to life. The book. It was so cool. Oh, my gosh. And to see how he's really dwarfed by the other gods like freya is like his height but it's kind of taller than him if he straightens up his back they'll probably be the same height odin's smaller than him well shorter smaller and shorter thor since thor's mama is a giant he's fucking gigantic but then again that's weird to say because um lo oh my gosh i'll just say loki it's his name loki's a giant and so is Faye. but Faye's is not like gigantic she's as tall as kratos if not taller, but she's not, like, gigantic and shit like that. Thor, just fucking large for no reason. Same with Tyr. It's like, who is feeding you guys? Like, why, why, why the hell are y'all so tall? But Baldur's, like, short. He's, like, Odin's height. He looks exactly like Odin. So it's like, bro. So, yeah, like, oh, yeah. I don't know what I was getting. I, get, I, I know. It's because Kratos is seven feet tall. Seven foot eight, I think, when looking it up. His younger self was seven foot eight. And then I guess as he got older, his like his spine shrunk him and shit like that or something happened. And now he's like either six foot eight or something like that. 
I don't know. But then I checked online, and Atreus is five foot seven. So Kratos is tall as hell still. Like he's around seven feet, if not seven over seven feet. And Atreus is five foot seven at fourteen years old. So yeah. And Thor dwarfs both of them. So yeah, same with Tyr. When meeting Tyr, I don't think Kratos knew that Tyr is not a regular soldier. He's not like anymore. He's broken. So he was trying to motivate Tyr and be like, oh yeah, you know, like you're a god of war. You're willing to stay here, all that stuff like that. I don't remember what he said. Um, but that motivated Tyr. If I'm be honest with you, Tyr stood up at everything. That motivated Tyr to leave. And Kratos even, like, undid Tyr's, like, restraints. They were willing to really work with this dude. And I'm like, that is really nice to see. This is something new. Like, what? I was like, I was, it was nice. It was nice. But anyway, we're going to move on to Atreus. Because a lot of it I wanted to talk about, it had a lot to do with Atreus. So we're going to talk about Atreus. Boy! Uh, yes, we're going to talk about Atreus. Yes! The half-giant himself, Loki. Now, in this game, we literally start off seeing Atreus in the distance when they were in that cave where he had deer horns. So, yeah, it reminded me of Marvel's, like, mainly Marvel's, like, horn thing. It didn't resemble a deer, but still, it, that's what it reminded me of. And I was just like, damn, they really are going to be exploring Loki in this one. And it, when I saw it in the trailer, it made me think he was going to become evil. Like, I actually was thinking in my head just like... He was either going to become, like, shooketh to the gods and, like, proceed to work with Odin just to see if Odin's actually going to be true on his thing. He's going to make that mistake and then Odin's going to murder his father and then Loki's going to be stuck and he goes berserk mode but he can't defeat Odin because Odin is really about that shit. And so, all that that's what I thought the trailer the game would go leading to. But no, it, it's not I don't think it's going to do that now. Um, but yes, we go encounter... Mr. Loki, he smiles a lot more. He's not as angry. He's taller now. He's five foot seven. He's roughly fourteen years old because there's been three Fimble winters already. And when he's around his father, it's more like I would say it's a awkward. No, it's more of an eager smile. It's really nice to witness. He he just looks. It's just he looks better, but he is still rather pale, which is concerning. You know, but then again, they've been in winter a long time. He needs sun. That's really just, he. He just needs sun. But yes, he's also very much more skilled when it comes to his powers, like witchcraft stuff, like that, oh, and powers in general. Dude turns into a bear, and we gotta fight him. Oh my gosh, Kratos almost killed him. Okay, and Kratos didn't know he was a bear. It's like he's getting stronger, but he's not being able to control it better, and his emotions are ruling over him. After Fenrir, his wolf, died, he basically walked away to, like, you know, grieve. Kratos gave him time to, like, be outside because he was going to bury Fenrir. And then he got sad. Then he got mad. And then before he knew it, a bear was charging towards him. And then he charged towards that bear. Then he turned into that bear. And that's and he didn't really remember turning into the bear. All he remembers was a bear coming at him. And so he killed that. He mauled that bear. He fucking murdered that bear. Um, But, yes, Kratos almost killed him. And... Atreus didn't know what happened so it's like damn but also Atreus knows how to self heal he focuses and he self heals he doesn't need one of those um like rune things that he makes like witchcraft with to revive Kratos he knows how to self heal now and it's so nice to witness oh my gosh oh my gosh also in this game I mentioned about the beginning of part where we see him as Loki with the beers He's going to want to try to find out who Loki is. That's why he even goes after Tyr. To see if Tyr knows more about Loki and what the giants were talking about when it comes to, like, Loki. Like, what were their plans for him? Because Odin also has plans for Loki as well. Like, mainly, like, I'm just saying Atreus and Loki in between. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Um, everybody has plans for this dude. And this dude also has plans to know who this dude is. Like... Atreus trying to find out, like, I want to know who Loki is and stuff like that. Like, I need to see what they have planned for me and whatnot. So it has them going on this journey because home is no longer safe because Thor and Odin roll up like they the police. <laughs> like, I can't. Thor and Odin rolled up at the crib like they really own that shit. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Lord, how much they can't ever go back home. But, yes, like. When it comes to Atreus, he's very optimistic in this one. Like, he, even when talking with Kratos, and Kratos usually has, like, you know, his cynical outlook of life or, like, his very cautious 
outlook of things. In the first game, Atreus would have been dead ass, like whining. Okay, he would have been like, "Oh my gosh, you never like." I was like, he wouldn't have been screaming, but it's kind of like I expected him to start whining. But I keep forgetting he's older. Like he's older now. He's more like not reserved, but more understanding, even more understanding. He's more logical as well too. And he has a plan in store as well. He wants to basically make a group to combat Odin and Thor. But he's not telling his dad that. And his dad already suspects that he's trying to, like, gather up a fucking group of people to, like, combat Odin and Thor. But, like, Atreus is like, no, I don't actually want a war. And I believe him. I believe he don't actually want a war. But I don't believe that he's rattling all these people, what, to have a peaceful protest and some shit. He's not doing that. Um, we, we know he's not doing that. Odin's evil. And so is Thor in a big ass way. They're both evil. He knows he's gonna have to have some heavy hitters on his team, on his squad, to defeat them. So that's what Atreus' plan is. And every time Kratos confronts Atreus about this, Atreus somehow convinces him, like, no, like, I'm not trying to do that. Like, they have, you're, you're Loki lying, but you're not. Haha, <laughs> you get it. Um, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> I really did not mean to do that. Um, but you're Loki lying. So it's like, yeah. Um, when it comes to meeting Tyr, I, should I just talk about Tyr after I talk about him? Damn, I only talked about him for five minutes, six minutes? Or less than six minutes? I talked about Kratos for ten minutes. Maybe it's because Kratos is the main character. Yeah. But, um, so was Atreus, Loki. <gasps> you get to play as Atreus. Oh, my God. He's so capable. His bow is, like, made out of titanium or something, bitch, because... He over here breaking chest and breaking enemies' skulls with the damn bow. And I'm, like, I'm over here, like, shocked and glad. He punches the chest and it does not break. It, he damn near breaks his fucking hand. I, I was like, damn, no wonder. Ah, because Kratos makes it look, like, easy as hell and it's not. Like, Kratos be making that shit look easy as fuck and he's just like, no, bitch. Like, you have to actually have even more strength after that. But he does have enough strength to slide one of those stones off of the, um, when you're gathering some treasure. It's that red glowing, um, stone chest, and he's able to slide it off. So he's strong enough to push that shit. He's just not strong enough to be, like, punching it open and shit like that, like his daddy. His daddy do have to put in his shell. Ew, what the fuck is this? Um, his dad had to put, I'm sorry, I looked at it something. It was just, it scared the shit out of me. But his dad has to have enough strength to put, like, punch that shit. He puts his whole shoulder into that bitch when he punches one of those chests open so yeah it does take a lot of strength to get it <laughs> you know but um also sorry that was my nose i was sniffling anyways what else was i gonna talk about with atreus and stuff i can't wait till we till we meet anger boda i can't wait i want to see his reaction to anger boda um but how atreus is he's very open-minded like it's really nice to see atreus be even more open-minded he's not like combating his dad when it comes to certain shit he's quite literally just stating his claim and his dad is listening more he's more understanding and so yeah you know atreus is thinking a lot more with his mind rather than his emotions the his emotions can get the best of him um showing us how he turned into a gigantic ass bear and almost died because kratos was really going rage mode and stuff like that and it kind of made me glad in a way not that kratos killed him but that kratos was genuinely struggling against him and it's really showing like atreus is strong as fuck like he's getting stronger and kratos literally had to damn near kill this bear to stop it so it's like atreus is getting strong as shit i love it i don't love the fact that he was fighting his dad and almost fucking died but i love that he was actually a match for kratos so yeah um but yeah, I'm not too far in the game. I love that they're meeting even more enemies. Kratos and Atreus. Oh my gosh, why I say that? Um, Kratos and Atreus are meeting more, like, not enemies, allies and stuff like that. They meet a gigantic ass squirrel, heavy ass squirrel. The squirrel be crawling on them. And I know they're strong as hell, because I know that squirrel gotta be. I know that squirrel heavy. Ain't no damn way. I know that squirrel heavy. It's almost like, it's almost their height. Well, not almost their height, but it's like the height of a child. A 10 year old child and they're like you know and seem like the weight too of a 10 year old fucking kid and so there's crawling around them and shit like that Kratos is just like what's happening and I was just like same like what the fuck is going on like what, what, what is what is this like anyways and how Atreus was holding thing and then it's crossed his legs and was just talking casually I was just like what the fuck is this man and Atreus looks so confused like I can't it was so cute to see oh my gosh 
But you see, he smiles a lot more. It's like, it's not small, but it's not a smile. I don't know how to explain what it is. Oh my gosh. And then when we're playing as him, I don't know why I want to say that he's just short, but he's not short. He's five foot seven. I'm five foot four. And that's on a good day, goddammit. Because sometimes I go to the doctor and be like, oh yeah, they're like five foot three and a half. And I'm just like, damn, can't you give me that other half and maybe five foot four? I, I, I can't stand being short already. You just go and stand me being short. Like, I'm tired of it. I'm tired. But anyways, um, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Um, anyways, look how cool, bro. Look, look, you see that drip? Oh my fucking God. Wait, you see it? You see it? Oh, look how good Atreus looks in golden blue. Like, I love it. I love it. Look and look at the look at the height thing too. It's like he is five foot seven, roughly five foot seven, I would say. He's up to his shoulder. When I saw that shit, I was like, bro, let's go. I love it. I love it. But yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. We love it. We love it. He's so much more capable, too. Like, oh, my gosh. Because when he was younger, he took out a bunch of dark elves by himself, baby. It don't matter that they were foot soldiers and whatnot. It's the fact that Kratos was in the light and was trapped in that bitch. And Atreus, being, like, his height and age, managed to take all them bitches down. Like, we already knew Atreus was the GOAT. But now he's even more capable. And I love to see it. So, yeah. Anyways. We're going to move on to, I would say Tyr. I would say Mimir, but I don't have too much to say when it comes to Mimir. So, yeah. Sack I lied. We're going to talk about Mimir. There's a moment in this one where Mimir, we, she, we see a side of him, you know. I don't know why I keep stuttering. Oh, my gosh. I'm just really excited, okay? That's why I keep stuttering, okay? I'm my bad, guys. My bad. But, anyways, how his relationship is with Kratos. Kratos listens to Mimir a lot more as well too he listened to me at the beginning like in the other game as well but it's like they're more relaxed with each other and he's giving even more advice to kratos despite the fact that i don't think he got kids um i don't know if mamir got kids or not but he gives some good ass advice like you know take your time with the kid like you know listen to it more like all this shit like you know kratos just do that but he, he don't say it in that way i'm just so dramatic what the fuck is wrong with me today but anyway i'm just excited um but anyways, yeah, he. this is one moment I want to talk about. He did not have two eyes. He did not have two eyes. I don't know where this other eye came from. I think it came at the end of God of War 1. Because dead ass. I was just like, where does other eye, where does other eye come from? He ain't had no two eyes and shit. What, what happened? What, what you talking with? But yes. Also, I don't think Mimir is from Norse mythology. I think I looked up something, and he's literally from another mythology. And I, I think it was because I was looking up who Tyr was um, way before this game came out. And it was talking about how Tyr basically went into other pantheons or other, like, mythologies himself. And so Mimir, finding out that Mimir is not really even from this one, I forgot what m mythology he's from. But, yeah, he's not even from Norse mythologies. It's, I don't know why he came in here then. I don't know, but yeah, there's a moment where they go to the sunny, like, um, I don't know what this place is called. I legit forgot, but it's like, a, it's, oh my gosh, I don't know what. It's the polar opposite to Fimble Winter. I think it's around where the dwarves, like, live, their regular home. That's where they live, and so they go there, and there's a giant whale they encounter, and they're going to free. And Mamir talks about how he trapped this whale centuries ago to please Odin, and it worked. He literally, I think they tortured that whale too. He literally robbed a sea creature like from its freedom all to please a cruel and malevolent god that's above him. Mimir did this when he was younger too and he didn't care. He even openly admits like he didn't, he didn't have it in his mind to care about this sea creature's freedom. He didn't give a shit because he was young and he was stupid as he describes it. And he feels a lot of remorse. He tries to free the sea animal. They end up freeing the sea animal, but the sea animal is so used to captivity, it doesn't know what freedom is anymore. It doesn't leave. It doesn't move away. It just stays there and stuff like that. And Atreus even hears, like, its thoughts or what it says. And it likes the wind blowing on it. That was it. It, it likes the wind blowing on its skin for the first time. And Mimir was being like, it's not enough. And then Kratos was even confiding in him and being like, sometimes it never is or th that's not exactly what he said but it's something along the lines of sometimes it never is but it's a start like he literally says that shit and i was just like yes kratos yes he relates to him y'all are friends uh, i love it i love it but yes that's a moment i want to talk about 
talk about when it comes to Mimir just shows a little bit of Mimir's past. Like, everybody has a little bit of a monster in them. Like, you know, that's the realization. So, yeah. It's really nice to hear more about Mimir's past and stuff like that. Because we hear a, a lot about how Odin was from Mimir. We hear a lot about how Thor is. We still do hear it in this game. But, like, when it comes to Mimir's past, it's like we don't hear enough about the bad sides of him and so to hear that shit was nice it was very nice it fleshed out his character a little bit more for me so yeah we're gonna talk about tear next tear my god you are nothing like how i thought you'd be um i was loki as disappointed as loki himself um yeah I thought oh boy was gonna be like sizing up Kratos because in the trailer he literally stands up and looks down at Kratos and, and I was thinking in my head I was just like maybe he's not looking down at him but maybe he's like realizing like damn you know Kratos is like small and he's probably like the almighty god and whatnot I don't know it just felt like ugh, I don't know how to explain it I thought he, it was a little bit of gonna be him showing Odin in him because he is Odin's child um not child but son I don't know why I say child I thought it was going to be a little bit of Odin in him, kind of like looking down, sizing up Kratos a bit. That's how the trailer showed it. In this one, no, no. The dude is so broken and so like shook by being like in captivity for so long. He over here, he saw Mimir. No, because Kratos brought out Mimir and Mimir, I forget Mimir is just ahead. So like when he saw Mimir, he was just like, oh my gosh, you killed Mimir. Get away from me. I was just like, oh my gosh, I forgot. <laughs> they technically did kill Mimir, but Mimir asked for it. So it was very much consensual, sir. Um, but anyways, he runs away from them. Both of them, both Atreus and Kratos. Um, dude, and how he looks as he runs is weird. He, he does not... I don't know how to explain it. He's very tall. He's too tall for his fucking self, okay? So, of course, he's going to run weird. But, yes, like, when I tell you, very broken of a man. It was because Odin did that shit. Odin's too powerful. And it makes me realize, like, Odin also has another child named Hela. I don't know if they're going to explore that person in this game, but they need to. Because when I tell you, when I tell you, all his kids are powerful, but they don't ever go against him because Odin's the almighty power. And it reminds me of Zeus when, like, you know, Apollo, um, I think Poseidon and Hera and another kid, I don't remember, all, they went against Zeus. And it was in, like, a Greek mythology tale. They went against Zeus, and there was someone, they trapped him, his ligaments were being torn out of his body. He was basically being punished and shit like that. And it was because they were getting sick of him and whatnot. And then he got broken free. I don't know who broke him free and whatnot. But Apollo got turned into a human. I think Poseidon did as well. And they had to serve all that for then. So, yeah. Uh, and I forgot what happened to Hera. I don't know if Zeus did anything to Hera. But, yeah. Um, that's what it reminds me of. Like, you know, they actually went against Zeus. But these, these people aren't going against Odin. And I'm over just thinking, like, you literally have Odin's power and more. You're powerful, too. Y'all could really drive back at this hole. Like, y'all could do that shit, and you're not, and it sucks ass. But, yeah. Um, but that's really mainly what I got to... Oh, yeah, he's also a pacifist. He has given up on fighting, basically. Deadass. He's given up on fighting. He doesn't see the value in it more anymore and stuff like that. He'd rather talk things out and stuff like that. And that's from all his years of being a god of war he's a god of war by the way um that's all from all his years of seeing a bunch of wars seeing how conflicts just happen and they basically led to just more death and destruction when they honestly could have talked it out i guess and that's why he wants to talk it out more um it's nice to see it but sometimes it's like damn dude can you like get out the way stop trying to talk to these people they're literally trying to cut your head off like bro come on now i'm gonna be frank with you i don't think i have anything more to say about when it comes to tear I do like his animations of when he's basically gigantic, so he, like, can climb onto tall surfaces and shit like that, be jumping on those things, I, I swear, I'd be like, dang, dude, you know, me and Kratos, like, Kratos and Atreus are small, you know, we can't do what you do, you over here being ahead of us, and whatnot, but yeah, he, he will, for real, before a fight begins or during a fight, he'll try to talk to the enemies, and then they'll end up like you know trying to kill him and it's just like dude you're just like get it now and odin kept him in captivity they were i think what they were feeding him and whatnot but he's still like too big for the fucking captivity he was put in and whatnot all that 
he also traveled to different pantheons. I think I mentioned it before. So yeah. But anyway, I don't know what other character I could talk about. I guess I could talk about Thor. Okay, so I procrastinated on making the rest of this video because like, I don't know. I was in bed for the first part of it and then I was, yeah, anyways. Let's talk about Thor, racist Thor. Ugh, beer belly ass Thor. Okay, so in this one, um, I'm probably moving a lot, my bad. In this one, he is, they mentioned that his mother was a giant. I don't know if that's an actual Greek myth. Not Greek, oh my gosh. Oh, I'm a traitor in Norse myth. Damn it. What's wrong with me? Anyways, I don't know if that's actually in Norse myth that his mom's a giant or whatnot, but it, I remember hearing something that he was, like, he didn't like giants at all and that he actually massacred them because I think it was because both Odin asked him and because he wanted to himself. But in this one, they don't know who killed the giants. It's so different, you know? So, yeah, uh... Basically, with him, you can tell he's depressed because I don't, I feel like he looks like this on the regular, but like not so disheveled, if you know what I mean. Like, he looks like he really did love his sons and miss his sons because when Odin was just like his sons were useless, Thor looked away and mumbled something. And I was just like, he pissed because ain't no way Odin mean as shit. He don't give a fuck about nobody, bro. He gives, he does, he cares for no one. And the fact that Thor works so closely with Odin is weird. Like, why are you working so closely with Odin? Is it because Odin's so powerful? Like, what's the point of working for Odin? Like, he's an asshole. Like, are you kidding me? Like, he don't even give a fuck about your sons. He literally called them useless after they die. Like, come on, man. Like, it just doesn't, I don't know. It's just so Ugh, why are you working for him? Like, why do you still work under him? Is it because he's your dad? So? Like, come on, man. And Odin's powerful. We get that. But so is Thor. So it's like, why are you even working closely under him? Like, what was the point? But y'all, anyways, that fight was crazy. I was like, Thor knew that um, Kratos was going to say no in a way. Like, at the beginning, it's kind of like, you could tell he was very depressed, but he was also shaking with, like, anger but he looked like he'd been angry for so long he didn't even really want to be there like he looks like he just showed up to show up like he's still mourning his kids like every Fimble winter he's been mourning his kids and it's been three Fimble winters now so it's like ugh. it's just what the fuck what is that um <laughs> it's just yeah you know like I don't feel bad for him or his kids his kids were terrible um but yes oh yeah also look at this okay so this is this is Thor in this one, in God of War 1. I could have sworn. So, Thor rolled up uh, at their crib when Atreus was a kid, right? But in this one, I think they're showing it as if either the second time he rolled up, because how they reacted was very odd. It's like they reacted like he showed, he been showed up. Like, you know, like he's been showing up every Fimble Winter year. Like, it was very weird. They weren't as shocked or fucking, like, cautious as I thought they'd be. At least Kratos wasn't. Kratos wasn't as cautious as I thought he, his ass would be. But yeah, in the first game, at the very end, it appeared as though he was coming when Atreus was a kid. So it's like, he, Atreus is still a kid, but I'm talking about when he was like 10. But um, yeah, he appeared far more um, not fat. Um, he appeared like how the Marvel series Thor kind of looks, at least in my eyes. He had more clothes on. He was literally prepared for winter. That's what he looks like. He looks like he's clothed, prepared for winter and whatnot. But he doesn't, I guess, look mythology accurate. In the in the new one, he looks mythology accurate. In the one first move, first game, he's not mythology accurate looking. He's He looks hotter, I guess, but he has he's literally wearing a hood. I don't know what's wrong with me. But, yeah, that's really all I gotta say on it. I don't know what he's gonna do. This is just me only on, like, the first four hours of the game. I wanted to say three, but first four hours of the game. His fight against Kratos. He revived Kratos, bro. He really was with the smoke for real. I was like, bro. Bro. But he wasn't trying to kill Kratos. Not just yet. He wanted to see the fight in Kratos. He wanted to see, like, what could have killed his sons. Because ain't no damn way that someone like this, that he's manhandling and basically killed, managed to kill his sons. And then he finally saw it. And then he's just like, okay, be seeing you. He literally said, be seeing you. And I was just like, this is such a Keanu Reeves moment. What in the John Wick is this shit? I was like, bro, let's go. But yeah, some people who were, like, disappointed in how, like, Thor looked because he's fat... Um, it's mythology accurate, if you want to be honest with you. Like, I've looked up him because I wasn't actually as interested in Norse mythology as I was in Greek mythology. I looked him up. 
Um, he's supposed to be pop Billy. He drinks a lot. He's racist and like he has he he looks like this. So it's like yeah, you know. I don't know if it's like moon millionaire. In some myths, they say that millionaire is like alive in some way. I don't think it's true. I doubt it. I doubt it. But yeah, next up, we're gonna talk about Freya because Freya really Freya be just just giving out them hands. I'm just like damn Freya. But anyway, let's talk about Freya. Freya, the depressed fairy queen herself. I say fairy queen. She was a Valkyrie queen, I think. Oh my gosh. This is just based off memory, guys. But anyways, yes, she's running up on Kratos and Atreus every chance she gets. Every time they're outside their stave, which is a protective barrier. I did not know that. Um, it was a protective barrier. It makes sense. But um, yeah, every time they're outside of it, she rolls up on them like the police. In fact, no, she don't even roll up on like at them like she the police and stuff like that. She be charging at them and stuff like that, turning into her bird form. She now can harm things because in the first game, I don't know if y'all know, she couldn't harm things like Tokyo. She couldn't hurt anything. She couldn't really fight herself. Like she could use things to fight. She just couldn't physically fight or harm anything herself. If you get my drift, she couldn't stab things basically. She could use her magic, revive a damn giant, and kill you with it. But she can't kill you with her bare hands herself, okay? Because in this game, she shows up, like, she be whoop, she, shit, she drove Kratos' face through the mud. Like, man, I was, it, I was laughing because damn, <laughs> damn, bitch. Like, she, she ends up stabbing Kratos and then choking him. And you can tell, like, she's so, like angry and unhinged she's pissed off and she can't grieve and stuff like that you know and i feel like in some parts she's low-key mad at herself because balder literally couldn't feel anything he became a monster he didn't feel anything and he just was going off of i guess emotion but then again he didn't really care anymore so it's kind of just like he was just living through it vibing and just causing havoc and she didn't do shit like she couldn't do shit odin literally trapped her away and odin didn't really give a fuck he actually liked that balder was unhinged he doesn't like anyone he doesn't like his kids he doesn't love anything he can't love anything odin's literally evil so it's like you know so when balder died he was just like oh balder was useful ah he really was starting shit for real he really was a chaotic being you know and then he pointed to thor and was just like oh he's boring i was talking about odin i don't want to talk about odin odin's an asshole i'm talking about odin every time there's a character is because he's a fucking dick and like oh my gosh i'm saying it too much um he's supposed to be like that you know i don't know who's worse him or zeus like I, i'm at this point i don't really know who's worse at this point but anyways Yes, with Freya, um, I bet the part, she didn't really kill Atreus, and I love that. I already knew she wasn't going to kill this man. Like, I thought, honestly, in the trailer, I had believed from my prediction of the game that she would actually convince Atreus to, like, come on her side, kind of, like, have a pseudo son. Like, you know, she trained him in, like, you know, witchcraft and whatnot. Not witchcraft, but magic. And then, like, steal away Atreus and then make Atreus feel as though, like, he's safe around her and whatnot. But also that she could just lure him away so that it would be easier to kill Kratos. I thought that was her original plan, but it was not. It was, like, once you watch it, you'll see that it was obviously not the plan. Because she legit was just like, you know, I'll go before I change my mind. Because he had already told her so much shit. Atreus told her so much shit about what went on. He told her too much. If I'm going to be honest with you, it only gives her more leeway to go and kill Kratos. Like, he literally was endangering his fucking dad. So, I'm just... He didn't realize that, though. But still, I don't think he realized just how much Freya wants to murder Kratos, okay? So, yeah. But that's the thing. She even says herself she can't go after Odin, which makes me think, like, why is Odin so fucking powerful? Like, what? why? Why is he so strong? Like, I don't understand. I, I literally just do not get it. Oh, yeah, there's a difference between her back then and her now. Yep. Her tattoos are more out there, too, by the way. Like, at least her arm tattoo is more detailed or more shown than in this one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's the breast and whatnot. Understandable. And her wanting to kill Kratos. Yeah, that's understandable. He killed her kid. He's like, shit, you know, even though her kid was an asshole, I mean, it was still her kid. I think that's the only kid she actually had. I don't think she had any other kid, too. I think that was her only child as well. So, yeah. 
Because I know if Kratos was like, if if Atreus had actually gone to full Loki persona, mischievous and all, and was damn near evil, I feel like even if you kill that evil being, Kratos would go berserk and would be on back on his god killing revenge scheme. Like he would go full like 360 on your ass and would proceed to be like how he used to be. So yeah. So you know, so he understands. That's why he don't want to fight her back. You know. So anyway, we're gonna move on to. Should I go to tier? I already went to tier. Did I? I did go to tier. Uh, who else is next? Who else is next? Should I talk about the dwarves? Uh, I talked about Mamir. I'm gonna talk about the dwarves. I'm gonna talk about Sindri. Sorry, I went quiet for a minute. Sindri! We're gonna talk about him. Okay, so with Sindri, he tells Atreus one part, on Atreus's part, when Atreus, like, you know, goes off on his own. Oh, yeah, there's a part where Atreus goes off on his own and we get to fight as him. Yeah. But anyway, when he goes off with Atreus, he's basically his partner in crime and shit. And he's so weird. He runs weird. I love it. I don't. I think it's just because he's small. Um, When you get too close or when you stop abruptly, he legit will just he's so finicky like what the fuck are you like holding up your arms and like cowering away what is wrong with you i, I just don't get it i just don't get it and then Sindri literally tells us that he ventured off into the land of souls or the lake of souls or whatever and retrieved his brother's soul and yet he's finicky as fuck and yet he managed to do that shit why are you acting like you've never been on an adventure before like he literally acts like he's never been outside before and it's like dude Sindri, what's going on like what is really up with you but yes um he is such a trooper. Like, if I'm going to just be honest with you, very talented, very, like, you know, skilled. He carries around a lot of shit. He carried around a whole, like, lever, like, in his bag, all because of his magic and whatnot. He even goes with Atreus to, like, make sure Atreus is okay. Even though Atreus is capable of protecting himself, he's still there assisting Atreus whenever there's fights, throwing out magical bombs and stuff like that. Even when Atreus saw Freya, he was, like, right there. He His shop was set up. He was, like, cleaning his shop, and he was just, like, um... He waited there because he knew if he showed up there, it wouldn't have been good, too. So, yeah. And he was worried that Freya was going to kill Atreus, but he, she didn't. So, yeah. And Atreus was just like, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. You see? She was going to kill me. I was just like, Atreus, you don't know that. You didn't know that, sir. Like, But I could see, I don't know if there's something wrong. With, for me, something feels off with Atreus. Like, his fear is gone. He's so abnormally eager. And... He's a kid, of course he's gonna be eager, but damn, he's like less fearless, and I don't know what's up with him. Like this dude over here, he stared at Odin and Thor. I wouldn't even be able to look at them bitches because they fucking powerful. So it makes me think, like, I guess his boost is that, you know, not only his dad is powerful, but he also has power in him, and he's very smart and whatnot. So of course there's not as much fear. He's already encountered so many enemies and killed so many enemies. What's there to be afraid of? I guess. So yes, you know, to have Sindri there, and Sindri admits something basically. Brock died, and so he needed to retrieve Brock's soul. He retrieved Brock's soul, but only got three-fourths of it. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing is. And he told Atreus this. I was just like, why are you telling Atreus this shit? But I realized, you can't tell Kratos this shit. He, he, Kratos hates Sindri. I don't know why. I guess it's because Sindri's fucking finicky and shit. But, like... Yeah, Kratos hates Sindri, so of course Sindri can't tell anybody else but Atreus. Atreus is very understanding, so you know, Atreus is just like, you should tell him that, and then Sindri gonna compare him literally forgetting one-fourth of his brother's soul to Atreus not telling Kratos that he saw Freya. Like, that's not the same. Atreus even said that's not the fucking same. <laughs> Sindri, how dare you compare that shit? But anyway, we're gonna talk about Brock. I'm gonna just bring up this picture right here, because I don't know. Well, actually, there goes this picture. Okay, good. I didn't have to search it up. Okay. I could have done that with all the other ones. Oh my gosh. But with Brock, he's still as foul mouth as ever. We love that though. He'd be cursing up a storm, but he's rubbing off on Atreus though. Atreus is just like shit, 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 shit when he almost died. Um, but yeah, you know, rubbing off on Atreus, I guess. Atreus is officially taller than him and Sindri. Um, when he came in, he was just like, oh, what is that? It's Atreus. And he's just like, oh, he looks like that now? I was just like, you asshole. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> you act like people can't grow. The fuck? But basically, yeah, that I I don't know what w one fourth part that was of his soul. I don't know if it was just the empathetic part, but he's still empathetic. He still helps them. He's still 
you know, he's nice in that way. He even acknowledges the fact that, like, yeah, we're nicer than our brother Derlin. Not brother, cousin Derlin. So, yeah, it's just like, you know, I'm not going to talk about Derlin. I don't really like Derlin. Um, and, uh, like, yeah. But anyways, yeah, you know, I don't know what that one-fourth part consisted of exactly. I don't know. Hopefully they tell us in the game. But anyway, that's all for this one today. This is part one. I'll do part two once I, like, you know, am halfway through the game or at least finish the game. And anyway, that's it for everyone. Ah, may peace be with you for an eternity.